this is this this is Alumio. Alumio is web based. It's it's running on Amazon, uh, and this is the actual product. This is of course my my, my test environment which we created for the webinar, uh, and there there is a lot a lot to do here. But you do always start off with the dashboard. You can see all of your tasks that some are processed, some it, it does happen. But of course we we make it an example that some tasks can be failed. Uh, but the main thing to to know the concept is that in order for you to synchronize orders as we are doing or, or any other data entity, you need to be creating certain routes inside of the system. Uh, and, and again, I'd like to remind you that because Alumio is always in the middle, there is always an incoming configuration. So this is the data we're pulling in. And in this case, we will be pulling in our order information from Shopware. Um, and, and again, so once this is an Alumio, we need, we need to push it out. Uh, so it's an outgoing configuration. And, and in this case, we will be pushing this over to SAP. SAP will then be creating an order. Uh, and so practically, the way this works in Alumio, you, need, you always need to give it a name. So orders from, you can see in my, uh, you can see that I've been giving a lot of examples. So order from Shopwares into, into SAP. And I will also name it webinar, uh, just so, so that it's easier for me to find. Of course, it's also possible to give this a description so that it's easier to find. Uh, and as you can see here, if there might be certain data entities that you need a real-time synchronization, a real-time sync. It's, it is quite interesting. My technical team has briefed me that real-time isn't used so much. It's, it's a design choice, but the, the reason why you, you don't want to do it, even if it can be very tempting, uh, you, you might end up, well, there, there's a risk that you might end up flooding the system that you're sending this to. So in this case, I will just leave things as it is to, to keep things very easy. I will click save. And then what happens is that once I have created my routes, whenever there is an update in Shopper, let's say that there is a new order coming in, uh, then by automation, Alumio will start to trigger this. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just manually starting this because, uh, well, because this, this is how I have configured it here today. And immediately you will be able to see that, okay, we now have a new task coming in here. Uh, we now have a new task coming in here. However, it is still not finished. And the reason why this is still isn't finished is that, yes, we have the incoming, so we pull this in, but the entire route must, must, must also get uh, triggered. And in practice, this is actually how it can look like. So there are multiple routes for multiple data objects. Um, I, I will run this one because this is the route I have created. And so again, this is, of course, live. This is all automation. Uh, but also then you, you can see that, okay, now, now we actually have a successful, uh, a successful order transfer between Shopper and SAP. So if you click on this, you can also see the, the actual data in question. We can see the, this is of course placeholder, but you, you can see the customer information. You can see the, the order, the order lines. Looks like it's a powerful graphics card, which uh, was, uh, was, was bought here. So this is, this is the full import log. And likewise, of course, you, you also have the, uh, the, the full export log. Uh, and this is, this is probably the main concept to understand about the, the IPAS or the integration platform of Alumio. You are creating routes, which are, you can view them as tunnels, if, if, if it's easier to visualize, and you, you're able to create a custom logic for each, for each data entity. Sometimes you might need a, a real-time sync. Maybe sometimes you want a 15-minute update once an hour, once a day. Uh, so, so all of this is possible. And